So I believe we, we shall have a fantastic time one way or another. And we we can be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, so that we can find a way how to progress in life, how we can overcome these particular disorders we have in our life. And what they say last time a disorder is, is something that we tend to go through and uh, we, we don't know. It's just like alcoholism. We think it's just normal and then if it takes control of us, we can live without it. Or maybe, is it gossip? You know, is it malice? Is it pride of life? And yet we don't know. There's something we're not conscious about. Uh, it has taken a control of us. I was just thinking about myself, things like tea, you know. So it has taken control of some of us that we cannot even move. We cannot progress with our life. So it has become a, a challenge for most of us because why? We, we don't know it is a disorder that is controlling us. Yet we think it's just a, it's a normal thing. Until it is taken away, that's when we realize it is a, it's a challenge for most of us, you know. So I, I, I pray today by the grace of God we shall find different ways of doing things, you know, of uh, appreciating things, of how to deal with things. And I pray we shall have, get wisdom on our advanced knowledge on how to deal with it. And I pray we shall get a better way of seeing different perspective about our lives and how we can, we can overcome it. So we started last week on the Instagram page at Ravinda Abraham looking at alcoholism. And we saw that, that people have different ways of dealing with whatever issues they're going through until it becomes control of you. Oliver was telling us that he learned how to drink alcohol when he was still a young person. Still, his father and mother had a, a you know, a bar. Yeah, a, a, a den where people used to come take small, but the first one he took is when he was very young, and he ended up becoming part and parcel of him. And for him to overcome him, overcome it, it took him time. You know, it took him time, and by the grace of God, we thank God that now he's doing well. You know, that he managed to overcome the desire, the the craving, and every other thing. So. I know most of us, we have different issues we are dealing with, definitely, that are wide from one place or another. So if you don't think about how is to find solution on it, it can take a toll on you. And you may never know it's a problem until someone points it out to you that this is a problem you're having. This is a challenge that you're having until someone tells it to you. And, you know, addictions or things that take toll over us, you know, we never know when it's cropping up and when it's growing. Like for me, I have an issue with tea, you know. <laughs> and it was pointed out, like, man, you need to control the tea. I could not sleep without taking tea. But you see, if someone does not tell me it can have a challenge or a health repercussions, I may think it's a normal thing. In the same way, like anyone struggling, the problem is that we magnify one part of life, like we try to bring things that everyone talks about, like smoking or anything, as a way, you know. But it should not be so, you know, it should not be so. So it's something we should always think about it, like how do we overcome it? How do we deal with it, you know? How do we overcome it, you know? And if you don't think about the process, it can be a little bit challenging. So the process is what is really matters right now, like how do you overcome whatever it is that you're going through? And I pray by the time we'll be done our discussion, like most of us will have found a way out, will have found a better way of seeing things, a better way of dealing with things uh, from different perspective. And there's nothing I can say it's a mountain. There's nothing I can say it can never be solved. Anything can be solved, you know. Anything can be solved, definitely, one way or another. Anything can be solved. If all of us look for a solution, we can always find find it, you know. But if you don't think of finding a solution on it, it becomes a challenging point of view. 
and you cannot progress from there. Yeah, thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. How are you? So fine. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we have. I don't know what we have today. We have to move on from there. Because uh, I think last week you talked about uh, at least uh, your co host, Oliver, mm -hmm. was had an uh, issue with alcoholism mm -hmm. and before he met Christ. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that is a form of disorder. Mm -hmm. That uh, I think you've already mentioned it that uh, it's not only alcoholism, uh, mm -hmm. there are some things that can be disorder in mm -hmm. someone's life and they may mm. not even notice. Mm. Uh, so we kind of we kind of like uh, uh, put our eyes on the the very known like uh, bad uh, like how alcoholism is not good. So I think mm. everybody like puts their eyes on such kind of disorders mm -hmm. and forget that things like even um, mentioned eating <laughs> disorder. <laughs> uh, can be even a uh, social media disorder uh, okay yes uh, and yes and that, that was a, a greater light and like most people have struggled with disorder they don't know that there are disorders uh, in their lives so it was a uh, good uh, conversation for us to check ourselves to know what is going overboard uh, and how can we make a balance with it yeah that's true yeah yeah um we narrow down to power of parents' influence on children with regard to disorders and how mm -hmm. can they come out of it? Yeah, I would say parents are the first preacher, you know, in anything we do. Uh, anything we end up doing, it, one way or another, as much as you blame the television or blame all social media platforms, I would say the first part, the channel to enter through you is through your parents. The kind of discipline I have, the way I work, is a result of what I learned from my parents. Or how I lazy around is maybe I saw my father. You see, uh, I have a daughter. I see how she crosses her leg, there I cross my leg. It's just natural, you know. <laughs> so, you understand. The days I used to say, she had me say, I'm tired. She started saying, I'm tired also. Until I needed to stop saying that so that she can stop it. So most of the disorders come through, generally through our parents. And most of us parents, because we don't know, we end up doing it consistently. Then we find our children growing to it, and we start asking ourselves, why are you getting that habit from? Until you trace it back to yourself, you'll come and realize it's away from you. So parents are shape, life shapers, you know? Like, yeah. uh, they shape our personalities, they shape ideologies, they shape even beliefs. So... It, if you are not careful about it, it can be difficult. Oliver told us what the parents used to sell uh, alcohol. What happens? That's when he's the father drinking alcohol when he was young. You see, it took him time to get it. But you see, if the parent wakes up one day in the morning and playing, complaining that my child is alcoholic, they forgot they were the, they were the gate to that access. So if you find people love maybe just chilling, doing nothing, it's something they learn. <laughs> You know, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. But you see, at the end of the day, it reaches a point when the person needs to work, but they have not learned it because they are not given that aspect. They are not trained at that. So parents are life shapers, you know. As I've told you, they will teach you the beliefs. They will teach you uh, your behaviors. They don't know one way or another. I learned how to wake up early from my mother, you know. Uh, mama used to wake up early. It was just a rule, you know. You wouldn't find her sleeping. So I learned like, hey, at this time, you cannot be sleeping. Why? It's something she taught me. But assuming if mama used to sleep till midday, I, I know very well, I will be sleeping till midday. Because it's a belief system I've already now have. I was taught how to be courteous, how to apologize, you know, when you're wrong. Why? Yeah. But assuming if she was rude, she never knew how to live with her neighbors. I myself, I cannot live with my neighbors because she taught me. Okay, so parents are very vital, you know. They're the gatekeepers of children's character, children's mm -hmm. belief system. They are gatekeepers of it. You know who's a gatekeeper? is the one who opens and closes. Yes. 
Yeah, that's what the Bible says. A child is trained at home. It's not trained in school. In school, they get education. You know, yeah. education is not training. And, and the first training starts at home. When the child is between zero and 10, they say, if you don't train them, they will not have anything to live with them from 10 years to 60. So because they will operate based on whatever they are taught. If they did something wrong, you never told them to say sorry. The one day they will be working somewhere, they will do something wrong and never do anything. But now they have a disorder of what? Maybe culture of behavior of response. You understand? You cannot tell them no. Why? Because their parents never told them no. So your parents are gatekeepers to what we adapt to, what we become, or what we end up living to be. Yeah. I love that because uh, a gatekeeper will, uh, as you said, determine what comes in and what goes out. Yeah. And most of the parents, uh, they are not very cautious of that or they they have not really mastered that art mm. and they think anything is permissible for children at a certain age. Mm. So they kind of like just, you know, treat you as a child. <laughs> I remember <laughs> you used to say you, you treat your child as a citizen. Yeah. Yes, not not as a child. See them. How do you see your children? Mm. Yeah. So I think that will help parents to know how to influence their children correctly. And and mm. someone asked, uh, what about is there a way a child can influence a parent who is maybe taking alcohol to move away from alcohol? Yes, because children sometimes are testimonies. There are books to be read. You know, as a parent, you can go and define your child lies too much. And then one day the child starts saying, we need to say the truth. You as a parent, you start saying the truth because the day you lie, the child said, you lied right now. What happens? Because especially a child who has gone to a particular level of from seven years, eight years and above, they know what is right and wrong. They will always can influence a parent's character. You understand? Because like I said, the same way when a parent can see success from a child and measure success, is the same way she can measure, measure a character. If a child's character becomes positive, the parent will notice, oh, by the way, things have changed. Like just for example, you find a child never used to play music. All of a sudden, they're interested about music. What will happen to the parent? We start thinking about music instruments. Yet the parent never used to think about that. The yeah. power behind it is that children also can influence parents. You understand? But you see, there's always a few few children who can communicate to parents because most of the parents always think, think they have already figured it out. But I believe, you know, as, a, as much as you're a trainer, you should also, also be consistently being trained. You know why Kodak stopped being Kodak is because they didn't allow themselves to be trained with the new cultures of children who are coming up. So smartphones took over from Kodak, you know? So anything that is being trending right now Someone is learning from it. The new trends which are coming. So if you want to be more an effective parent, or you must know how to learn from your children. And if you're an observant parent, obviously you can learn. If you see your children sort of speak, speak peace, like let us stop quarreling, let us stop arguing, let us stop raising our voices. Or, or mama, I want time to get time to read. It can challenge your parent. Like you find a child doing business, it can challenge your parent. Like, oh, by the way, what am I doing with my life? So they can speak to them. But I can see a few percentage of parents at this generation will get time to talk to their par children or observe because everyone is looking for livelihoods, you know. But the truth is they can. They can. Yeah, they I can. Really agree with you. They can. Mm. And uh, like the fact like, uh, okay, this may be out of the disorder topic, mm. but I'm just imagining uh, God telling David about it's not you who will build the temple, it's your child. So mm -hmm. it's Solomon, you know, so there, there was something his child could do that mm -hmm. David, with all his mightiness and all that, mm -hmm. could not maybe be allowed to do at that particular time. So I believe uh, children, children can influence their parents, mm -hmm. but then as you said, it's good for parents to be ready to to listen mm. and that takes a lot of humility because mm. i had an example of someone saying uh they were not so much vast with uh, the technology right now but his son that is is that your age group where mm. technology is very fast to them so he mm. just like 
got him on his organization and employed him for the mm. time being at least before he gets maybe a better job but you'll mm. help him with social media and the guy mm. was very quick within 48 mm. hours he had already like uploaded so many videos of of his dad and i am just seeing how how if parents are willing to be very to be humble to mm. know there's this there's what they can delegate to their children or even can listen to their children you know they can mm. even go a long way mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah so that's something we we need to think about you know you know that training is a two way thing i always say that you learn from the younger one and the younger one learns from the top because there's no organization that cannot survive if it cannot learn the movement of the horizontal line you know you must know that's why there's no lift that goes and stays on fourth floor or tenth floor it must come down you understand and the movement of the lift is what determines how what is happening in the organization the same thing with any family if we learn to learn from the younger ones and the younger ones learn from us what happens it goes far and you see like that chef parent you know his business i believe or his company is doing far better because of his child and i'll say with all due respect for all of us who are going or future parents or your your parent maybe what you need to unlock yourself maybe is just in your child it's just in your child but because you have learned you have a disorder of you are the parent you can never listen you can never ask questions you end up being wrong i, I deal with children on different ages and one thing i've learned is that they always have an opinion as it is if you listen to your opinion they are very correct very correct you know very very correct so that, that's the main most important thing like but you see how do we overcome that culture or that disorder of that my child can tell me something and i listen it's yeah. something we need to be able to deal with it one or another so what do we have next for our question there as oliver is planning to join us we shall be three of us today yeah hoping that oliver also will engage us one or another as we try to finish up yeah. okay so for a case where someone was in a circle of friends Mm. Uh, and they used to take alcohol together and then mm. he stops taking alcohol but you see they had the, in the, that circle of friendship they had maybe started a business mm. for example mm. how can this person still uh, maintain the relationship and still do the business with these past people this circle of friends uh, and also be a good influence for them to stop engaging in uh, alcohol yeah there are three ways you need to see life in three levels you know change is one thing that's permanent in life there's no way you can stay in one position and i want to overcome a particular disorder now when you're having a group of people it means you're working with them okay and you can only work with what you see but if you need to change your level you need to ask yourself i i want to run if i want to run faster than whatever baggages i'm carrying you need to ask yourself what principles do i embrace in my life because if without without the principles there's no way you walk out of such kind of toxic relationships or toxic things that you're doing you know so what are the principles have you embraced in your life and after getting the principles you must be able willing to take particular instructions for yourself and I've come to realize most of the hardest things in life is that most people don't have, don't take instructions, you know. They don't even have an instruction from themselves. They just move, you know, like they don't have instructions for anything they want to do. And I've come to realize if you don't instruct yourself sometimes, even your principles may not hold water. You may not hold, you know, like you must wake up in the morning and say, I instruct myself, I'll wake up and go. I don't know how many of us have ever had maybe the day you're supposed to shower electricity goes and you're in the bathroom you must instruct yourself to just enter that place and finish bathing with that soap you know but the principle is this that you don't use cold water it's because you love warm water you know that's what you love you know that's what you enjoy so for us to overcome such kind of relationships remember if you work with people you work with what you guys agree what you see but sometimes for you to overcome such things, you must have principles. And after principles, you must know how to instruct yourself. Like, I will not do A, B, C, D for me to be able to overcome this particular kind of disorder. Like, I can't live without tea. I need to instruct myself. 
I will not take tea today. Even if I have a principle of not taking tea. I tell you, everyone in the house, no one will cook tea. But you see, that one does not overcome the instruction I can give myself. You know? So I, I will still go to the fridge, remove milk, <laughs> pour and make tea. Because why? I've not instructed myself. Anyone fighting any addiction or any challenge in their life is a result of lack of instruction. If you can't instruct yourself, it becomes very challenging. Instruct yourself. Teach, teach how to instruct yourself. Because if you can't instruct yourself, yeah. Mm -hmm. So does this mean like uh, if you're in a circle of friends who are still in that area or mm -hmm. they're still doing what mm -hmm. you used to do, which whatever you've overcome, mm -hmm. uh, you can instruct yourself, yes, not to indulge in that again. But how mm -hmm. can you like be an influence to these friends to stop? Because uh, like, I, like I said, people read you, people learn from you. How you instruct yourself is how people will believe who you are. You know, if you tell someone I've stopped doing things, someone will not believe it based on, but we look at how you instruct yourself, how you sit, how you behave. You know, a modest man will be seen by his own instruction he embraces. You understand? Uh, when they talk about Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, they say they were amazed at how the tables were arranged, how the servants were dressed. That was a matter of instruction. It was not a matter of principle. Because if we're supposed to look at the principles of every person, every person had their own baggages. So I, I, you see, for, uh, the main course of life is to win the negative to the positive, not to judge the negative one. But most of us, we spend time judging the negative one rather than instructing ourselves in a way we can win. The, now, Jesus himself was a man of, full of instructions, not a man full of principles. That's why we had that he will go and at night to pray, he will be the disciples. Yet even the disciples were sleeping. Based on principle, it was at night, it was very cold. He instructed himself to wait in prayer. So instructions of our power or any form of principles and of our power what people tend to believe at the end of the day. Anyone who's been celebrated right now in life is because they have a very strong instruction, structured life. And that structured life is a result of what? Instruction. instruction. They give themselves. Mm. But most of us, the problem is that we are waiting for people to give us instructions. You know, teach yourself first. Like, I am struggling with this. I have this particular kind of disorder. I cannot stay without eating cake. I cannot stop without buying 20 shoes a week. Why don't you instruct yourself? Because your friends buy shoes and you feel like I just need also to buy shoes. But you can instruct yourself, you know? You can instruct yourself that I will use this money for this particular thing, or I will use this time for this particular thing. That's why successful organization, we talk about structures. Structures are generally instructions, not principle. Instructions. Amen, yeah. amen. That's very powerful. Yeah. Oliver, you're welcome. You're in question number four. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's uh, that's uh, that's very powerful. Uh, instructions. Uh, if you can instruct yourself, then you can also instruct someone else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so there's a uh, there's a question here about uh, I, okay, just as we learned in the previous session, uh, there's disorder. Disorders, there are different forms of disorder. You know, we are just not limiting to, <clears throat> we are not just limiting to, to alcoholism. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, there are this, uh, I'll use uh, people who are addicted to alcohol as a, an example, but there are those who have disorders of impulsivity. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, mm -hmm. it, you're welcome back. You're welcome. Okay, continue, please. Yeah, so mm -hmm. is it necessary to become spiritual to break off alcohol addiction and all these other disorders? For example, uh, there are these who, uh, these people, I'll just use uh, those who are addicted to alcohol as an example. They are mm -hmm. being taken to rehab. They come back, but they're still the same. Yeah. Uh, I, have a, I can give an example with uh, one of my siblings. Uh, he's addicted to alcohol. Uh, mm -hmm. I let People to pray for him. Paka wakeka candles, red, black. 
sisi kitambuni ni kitu cha wapi wakaleta alafu anaombewa anaambiwa akunywe atiateme sasa hata ikunywe itakuwa ikitoka so, uh, so how how can because now there's someone outside there who is wondering hizi vitu zote amefanywa but hajaacha kunywa pombe or aje hiyo disorder it does not ijamwacha like how can how can he break out of this with regard to uh, uh, becoming spiritual no but this is not a matter of being spiritual we have spiritual people are struggling you know we sometimes we we forget the best form of spirituality is to master yourself yeah you understand what i'm saying that's why we talk about meditation you know uh, you see these people who do yoga or get time to meditate what are they trying to do they are doing the art of mastering yourself communicating with themselves uh, they say the greatest mountain is not outside there sometimes it's usually inside us <laughs> you understand so even if right now i bring for you people who even will cage you take you to madari even if they give you what kind of medicine if you don't learn to talk to yourself master yourself it will be very difficult one or another you understand and i believe that the best form maybe of spirituality that's why if you talk about any faith any faith starts with you it does not start with the preacher or the person who's talking to you it starts with you if you don't have personal way of handling yourself no one can introduce you to anything because for you to do that someone gave you an idea but it's you who thought about it and then approached it and took steps to do that thing whatever you wanted to do like anyone who's maybe going through pornography or anything it's an idea someone showed them like hey here is this and they say look like, oh you know no dt and what happened they end up embracing it no one forced them that's what they say they do it in secrets you know they do it in public because it's a personal thing it's a personal mastery now for someone to overcome the same thing they need to have a personal mastery you understand mm-hmm. and god cannot deliver what you have not chosen to receive Amen. It's as simple as that. I can never give you a gift that you have never chosen to receive, no matter who you are. Only even now the president comes to you and says he wants to give you a house and you don't want he cannot do anything even if he has the power. So there's no deliverance that comes if you do not take the initiative of receiving it. So that's why I say the fastest form of spirituality I can talk about is mastering yourself. And when Sinach says I know who I am, is a matter of being who who you are if you understand who you are you can be able to deal with issues and why most of us maybe we're not able to move from past things past pains past particular kind of habits is because we have not mastered ourselves so i'll give you advice it's like the same thing you tell a poor man if you invest here you will make money even if you preach for him seven ways or 20 ways to be rich if that person has not mastered themselves there's no way they can go anywhere that's why god talks to you and that's why the bible says the, your body is the temple of the holy spirit your, your body not your, your 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 congregation or your the movement you're working with it is you so even if i bring for you a prophet from wherever it is yeah to prophesy to you <laughs> and you have not mastered yourself the prophecy can go to the wind the zarafa woman mastered herself she knew what she wanted she knew very well so if you need to start overcoming your addictions it starts with you what do you know about yourself where are you going what 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 are the choices you are making and these choices come to a place of knowledge like now we are talking someone is listening and starts asking themselves by the way whoa what am i really struggling with is it really uh you can't say it's your parents who made you start doing it that's a lie you can't say it's your friends who started making you do it no one forced you it's you you allowed yourself to start doing it anyone using cocaine or whatever it is someone introduced you to them but it's them who accepted it now for the same person to be delivered he must you know make that person that decision that's what i say sometimes deliver yourself mm-hmm. and god will see you and he will help you but if you don't have a perspective that the power is with you you will stay in that thing you will you will not move past it uh, you know growing up sometimes we used to be told some particular subjects are very difficult or everything it is a matter of the mind frame you know i would like to you the little bit of grown in life i've come to realize if you cannot understand you are a, you know bible the bible says we are god's battle axe do you know what does it mean if the axe does not know it's sharp it cannot cut down a tree as much god wants to use you you must sharpen yourself to be able to be 
able to be willing to be used for, for the master's use, for the progress of the master's use. You understand? So master yourself. The person, even if you pray for him, take him to Madare, lock him, put him even in charge for one year, two years, surrounded with prayers and everything. Do you, I don't ever forget this. The Bible says the entrance of the word. If that man will not allow the word to enter, nothing will happen. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, nothing will happen. That's what they say, the entrance of the word. So it must enter through somewhere. And if it enters, someone must open the door. Is it true? Yes. And if you don't open the door? It will not enter. Uh, so you, no matter even how you love me, even if I'm coming to see you, and you don't want to open the door, do I do anything? If I enter through the window, you call me thief. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes people open the doors just for you to enter and finish your business and get out. You understand? But they still remain with the problem. It starts with you. Master yourself, you're able to overcome a lot of issues. So the person must be taught that the power is within them. That's why the Bible says you are a God, you are the children of the Most High. If you don't know, you die like men. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. And maybe you can mention, uh, Oliver, some of the disorders, because you're not just dealing with alcoholism here. There are things which may look very normal or very natural but they're actually disorders if someone has overindulged in them so what yeah. what were some of the examples that you talked about last week uh let's uh there was uh gossiping <laughs> gossiping <laughs> mm -hmm. there was gossiping uh, there was uh people were just like uh okay that was just a, an example of yeah uh, disorder for Kula. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there's there's pornography, addiction to pornography. There is uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's very critical. So what's the next question, please? Uh, so uh the next question uh it's about emotional intelligence so uh, yeah. can you talk emotional intelligence and how we can master our emotions rather than act as how we did in the past uh this is uh someone uh who was uh uh he has uh he has uh, let me start from here uh now uh, when they take alcohol maybe they, they will not speak they will go and take alcohol I'll use that alcohol as an example, but there are those uh, they fall back when mm. they are maybe so when they get angered, like I have an uncle, uh, Kasirishwa, he will not stop. Mm. He will go and take alcohol, then come back, then you know it will come Kasirishwa happen. So, <laughs> uh, so there are these uh, uh, people when maybe uh, Muta Misha talk Amenda, he has already been saved, he's serving in the house of the Lord, and see in the house of the Lord is service, meaning there's a leader. And uh, 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 if there's a leader, mean there's correction because no one is perfect. Yeah. Uh, there's correction. Yeah. So now, in, when they get corrected, they like it. It they get offended. Yeah. And when they offended, they uh, they start saying that's a salvation. That's a you know in Angola, then they fall back. Yeah. That one touches on their emotion. It's the yeah. right, uh, Yes, yeah, and, and it's natural, and this is so I can say with all due respect, also affects marriages or relationships. Or when, when, and you see, emotional intelligence is one of the things that people should be taught as much we teach people. You know, the one thing about school, the school develops the mind. And when you go to church, they develop the spirit. And when you go outside the world, they develop a financial path. But no one takes time to develop a fun, emotional path, which is very unfortunate. And if you check, for you to be successful financially or in education, or in your spiritual life, you must be very emotionally stable. You understand? You are the wife of Job, say, cast God and die. Well, what made him cast God and die? It was emotions. When you hold that time, God had become something else. And you see, that's why you see a man will be angry, will go take alcohol, or the woman will be angry, and that day at Hekachu Vinyingi Kwachakula, no one will eat even that food because it has a lot of salt. She's angry, you know? Uh, and I always say, 
this is something we need to teach ourselves deliberately. Deliberately, you understand? This is a deliberate course you must take by yourself. Let me tell you, when you're born on this earth, no one told you, no one guaranteed you that they will treat you right. But you must guarantee yourself you'll treat yourself right. You hear that? No one guaranteed you they will treat you right. Must You must guarantee yourself, yourself individually, you will, you will treat yourself right. That irrespective of how someone handles you, you will not go and do something to hurt yourself, thinking you're punishing people. A husband will refuse to eat, thinking he's punishing the wife. You're not punishing the wife. You're punishing yourself. You'll sleep hungry. <laughs> you'll sleep yeah. hungry. And your wife will snow very well. Wake up in the morning, will be so fine. <laughs> you will be so mad there. You're not happy. But it's not her fault. It is your fault. Why? Because you are a sulking man. You are a sulking baby in the form of a man. Because no one teaches you. And I think the emotional intelligence starts from when you are young. In your home. When you did wrong, how were you corrected? And how did you take correction? It starts from there. You understand? And if you find yourself, every time they call you daddy, baby, when you get to marriage, you're expecting your wife to also be doing daddy, baby. They have no time for that. You are working in a job, in an office, your boss tells you no or disappoints your expectation. Just know how to handle that. And emotional intelligence is deliberate. You must now understand what offends you, what makes you feel. You know, that's what the Bible says. You are, aff- you are permitted to be angry, but you're not permitted to sleep what? <laughs> angry. Mm-hmm. Why are you not permitted? Treat yourself right. That's what God is telling you. Just treat yourself right. Because his masses are new every morning. He will may want to speak to you tomorrow morning. But tomorrow morning, you woke up, you're angry still. Well, how will he speak to you? You tell me, how will he speak to you? Because you are so offended. Listen to me. If you don't deliberately train yourself, how you handle emotions, how you handle disappointment, how you handle rejection, especially rejection. Most of us are very, we take it very hard. When someone rejects us or someone tells us no, don't take it hard for yourself. Don't take it. Emotional intelligence is a, de- is a deliberate choice you make. And if you find maybe business is not growing, business is not growing, it's because of lack of emotional intelligence. Someone had a disagreement with a customer. Now they block the customer. They do everything. Seriously, what were you doing? Then later tomorrow you discover I needed the same customer. There is no one who can offend you. You can only offend yourself. I've come to that conclusion. That's why my wife knows I don't... You you do whatever you want to do. Uh, Yes, I'll tell you I'm not happy, but I will not allow you to get into me. Uh, because if you get into me, what do you know what's happening? I'm not taking care of myself. And that's what we should teach our children. We should teach our teenagers that. People will tell you no. People will not make you happy as a dear. But handle yourself in a way that you will not hurt yourself. Amen. Don't, don't, so why people are backsliding is because they don't know how to handle themselves. People will take money from you. I have lost money. No, I've not lost it. It's not small money. But did I cry? Did you find me in the house in the bed? I'm sick now. Temperature. I need a doctor. For what? I need to know how to handle myself. Your children will grow in a way they will one day question you. How you handle yourself to show that you're a true parent? Your level of intelligence and response. And you think emotional quotient, EQ, is the most highest form of intelligence an individual can have. Leave IQ alone. EQ. If you don't have EQ, your IQ will become useless. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> that's, the, so that's the best intelligence you can have. EQ, emotional quotient. If you can handle feelings, if you can handle what people tell you, if you can handle how people react towards you, if you can handle how people deal with you, you will go far. Like you go far. Jesus wanted to be stoned, but Jesus never stopped talking to the Pharisees. But you wanted to be stoned. Some of us want to be stoned. We will never go there again. I am done with you. You wanted to stone me? Yeah. But you still went back. The same man who died for us, who still came back and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. <laughs> he says, through me. You go to the Father. Look at that. The EQ is the best intelligence you can have. So if you find someone like your uncle now, maybe going back, 
It's a matter of training of his emotions. And we must train ourselves. That's why we find people going back to the same dog's vomit is because their EQ is not developed. And for you, if you have a child who are listening to me, start developing your child's emotions when they're young. Emotions. Let them know when to, to be emotional. Let them know how to handle their emotions, how to handle their anger. You know? If you don't know how to do that, one day you'll break everything in the house because someone did not pick your phone call. So you know what's happening. What, the rate of divorce is a matter of EQ. Do you know that? It's not a matter of IQ because people are intelligent enough. Most people are financially stable. It's just because of emotional intelligence. Like I was telling someone today, if my right hand is not, may not be your right hand, based on where you are seated, there is no way they can face the same direction. Do you know that? Yes. Sir. If I lift up my right hand and you are facing me, you lift up your, there's no way they will face the same direction. Do you know why? That's how life is. Don't expect everyone to see things that you are seeing. That's why now you start taking care of yourself, knowing that they may misunderstand me, but do not allow them also to misread you. Did you understand that? Yeah. They may misunderstand me, but do not allow them also to misread because your reaction as intelligent, as emotional intelligence. You're a young man, you're in a relationship, you get angry, you don't switch off your phone, you will not talk to your partner. Yet you're saying you want to be married, you'll stay single. You know one will marry your child because something small. The person may be busy, they're in the office, they cannot pick your call. Why are you offended? So your EQ is very powerful, you know, than your IQ. And I've seen, look at the most successful people, the Dagote of this world, the whatever, Bill Gates. And I think there are, there are people who have worked with many people who are under them. But how do they manage to keep their companies above? Because they know how to deal with their emotions. Okay. If you are poor with the emotions, you will lose people. People will not love you. You will not have charisma. You will not be warm. Yeah. Mm. That is it. So anyone who's backsliding is because of emotions. Not because Jesus does not save. Not because there's no spiritual environment. There's not that because they don't have spiritual guidance. All that is there. But their EQ is weak. So anyone who's going back to the same disorders, like going back to your vomit, mm. it's, uh, there's an EQ involved. Uh, I mean, yeah, because when they are done with it, they realize, why did I do this? I remember mean, someone who abuses someone, then they say, oh, I am so sorry, you know what I mean? Where were you when you were abusing me? Who, who was talking? It was the emotions which you are talking. It was not your intelligence. Because the intelligence later comes and questions you, what were you doing? So your EQ is very, fun, is very fundamental, it's very powerful. Uh, any person in a relationship, in a business, you're in career or you're in school, whatever it is, just develop your EQ. It will keep you alive. It will keep you alive. Amen. And I believe uh, when the scripture talks about the fruit of the spirit, that's a whole EQ <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> right that there. is it. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> yeah, it is a real curriculum. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's not easy, which needs to be developed. As you said, you need to develop your EQ. Just like the fruits of the spirit, you need to develop them. They don't, they are there, but they need to be developed. Mm. And you see, self control is part of it. So, <laughs> yeah, for the spiritual part, I think that's that's, a, that's an amazing scripture. Mm. Awesome. Mm. That is uh, that's very powerful. I think the, the Amen. Yes, it uh, it just combines the EQ inside it all of it. When you <laughs> get to look at the use of the spirit, you you have it according to our. I think we are remaining with four minutes. Uh, no, it's okay. We can we can stretch. There's no problem. We try to finish today. All right. Uh, yeah. There's only a question remaining. Although it's related to the one we just answered. Okay. It's how 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 can one deal with uh, conduct disorder from habits uh, that one used to have? For example, uh, alcohol behaviors. Yeah. The, the, that's a, the transformation process. The, I always say everything, give it time, you know, and be deliberate. And like I say again, we are not perfect human beings. And if you expect me to be perfect, you may be very surprised, you understand? 
the same zeal Paul had when serving Christ. He the same zeal he had when he was a Pharisee. <laughs> so he didn't change. He, Paul was Paul. You understand? You understand? The zeal was there. And most of us, uh, we come in from different backgrounds. You see, I was raised not the way you are raised. And the, the problem is this. If you're not patient with me, but you're more judgmental with me, you will never appreciate the process I'm making. That's why you can hear someone says, you don't notice what I try to do. Everyone tries, you know, like that's the main thing. So when it comes to conduct, you must be patient with yourself. But it means deliberate. Uh, they say it takes 21 days to make a habit, you know. You must be deliberate. They say, now I'll be patient with myself. This is my goals for this month. Stop telling us you're making a resolution and you cannot deliberate about the resolution. Be deliberate and be patient with yourself. You understand? If someone who needs, yeah, you want to start training a thousand kilometers a day, you can't start immediately. You must start with five kilometers. Let us hear you have done well. Be patient with yourself. Master the five kilometers until it becomes nothing. Then go to 10 kilometers. But if I tell you to start today to a thousand, you will kill yourself. We will look for an ambulance to pick you from wherever you are running to. You understand? Because you'll not be able to walk. Because you have not mastered the... That's why they say the sweetest wine in this world is the one which has been brewed for long. If you want to get the best results in life, brood yourself towards the achievement. That's why I will never take my time to be envious on someone's success. Because I believe if I brood myself properly, I will have my own kind of success. Because success is relative, you know. So why should I kill myself when I see maybe my mate doing this? It's because I'm not patient with my change. I'm not patient with my improvement. If you've been having a particular kind of conduct, be patient on how to overcome it. You are, maybe you, you exaggerate stuff, you know. Be deliberate that I'm not exaggerating. And tell someone, look for an accountability partner. Like, if you hear me exaggerate, tell me, you know. So I can stop exaggerating, you know. If I tell you, did you see a camel? You tell me, yeah, I saw a camel. It was black and white. You have ever seen a black and white camel? Well, you know, it's just then you tell me figure of speech. After realizing you have already exaggerated. You see, it can be a problem. That's why I tell you it can be a disorder and you don't know. So you need to be patient. Then develop an accountability partner with you to help you grow. You see, the Bible says, be renewed by the renewal of your mind. But the renewal of your mind is a process. It's a process. You can't, you can't absorb all knowledge today. It's a process. You understand? Also, for you to be delivered from particular conducts and everything, give yourself process. Be patient with your partner. Be patient with your spouse. Just be patient. You know, they will become it, you know? Like, like, I know there's no one who's perfect. There's no one who's excellent. There's no one who has achieved. Everyone has their own little weighty matter, you know? Mm. You know, the little weighty matter they may maybe tell, never tell you or talk about. Maybe they have anger issues. But if you're not patient yourself, that I reduce my anger. Like I used to have a very strong temperament, you know. My angers were very extreme, you know. And I started making deliberate decisions that I will try not to be offended on things that do not even add up. You understand? And I could test my anger is because of how I was raised and everything. I had my own things to deal with. You understand? So the only way I knew is to deal with it the way, I, the way it comes. But I needed to be patient with myself because I realized. It's making me lose people because the way maybe I'm talking, people are realizing I'm not friendly as much as I think I'm friendly. Because I'll say something, someone will think like, ah, are you really my friend? Do you answer it? Why are you angry on me like that? I won't talk to them, you know. I'll be so reminding them of their, their wrong all the time. So I said, now I'll remind you, but not talk about it. I'll try to overcome it. But I needed to give myself goals and, you know, be deliberate about it and patient with myself. Because if I was supposed to use a standard of measure, no one can give you a standard of measure. Do you know I can never tell you it takes two weeks to overcome eating too many eggs? It's a lie. If you're an egg person, you're an egg person. Even if I tell you two eggs and I put an egg of tray before you, you'll only think about eggs. So it's you to deal with yourself. We deal with yourself. And let us stop measuring people based on our way of doing things. And stop measuring yourself with the way people... Just be deliberate, you know? And that's why it says it's a process. Be renewed by the renewal of your mind. And the Bible says, 
the word of God is like water, is like a bath you are taking every day. Do you take 10, 10 baths in a day? No. <laughs> you can't. The bath you take even if it's twice in a day is what helps you. And you allow the bath to go. But remember, when you sleep, tomorrow morning you wake up again, you need to take a bath. What's happening? There's still the toxic in you that you still need to wash. It is continuous. Yeah. It is continuous. So if you, you cannot be patient with yourself, you may never be able to overcome particular conducts in your life. Yeah. Uh, only have something to say. <laughs> no, I think that, that was very enlightening. I think we've come to the end of our question yeah. for the day. Mm -hmm. And I, my take home is be able to instruct yourself. Yeah. Instruct yourself. I think that, that's, that's an amazing, uh, it's more than a principle. See, I'm a person of principles, blah, blah. But being able to instruct yourself, even that will help you with the emotional intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> people, of course, people break principles, my dear. But people who instruct themselves, you can never break it. <laughs> they can yeah, never do that. that. Yeah. So thank you for all of you who have watched today. Uh, God, God, God bless you and your another. There's no one who has achieved in life. Everyone is in the journey of success because success is not a destination. Also, your life. Be patient, you know. All of us will achieve things, irrespective of where you're coming from, who you are, who you're designed to be. One day I was a small person. I got opportunities from people who loved me and favored me. And I'm still patient with myself, knowing that I continue. I'll meet people who love me and favor me, but I don't ignore this part. I need to instruct myself daily to be an achiever. You understand? I take my work seriously. Like I instruct myself I need to wake up, you know. I've realized you can have principles, but if you can't instruct yourself, that principle can break it in the day. You know, <laughs> you can break it. You know, you can break it with real respect. You know, today you may be fasting and you say it's a principle I will not eat. <laughs> Wait till you see the goat meat. <laughs> you will realize that you have appetite. You realize how you have missed goats. <laughs> What's happening? Unless you instruct yourself that got meat will become a challenge for you. So anyone who's going through any particular form of disorder, everything can be overcome. Get time to master yourself. Develop your EQ one way or another. Don't only develop your IQ. Don't only really develop also your spiritual life and forget to develop your emotional quotient. It's very important. From there, all of us will succeed. Thank you all for joining and watching by the grace of God. 